Well, well, we are. It is raining here. Uh, we're outside of the rain shadow here. And if you look down, you can still see um, evidence of what we've been going through in February. So why did this happen, especially since January was so great? There's a lot going on here. This very colorful map showing the jet stream today over North America. And if you look up into the northeast section of the country, the purple areas, speeds in the jet stream are hitting about 230 miles per hour. So take 230 miles per hour, add in, say, a 737 going about 550 miles per hour, and you have a flight that could be reaching 780 miles per hour as measured over the ground. Alaska Airlines confirming it's reaching East Coast cities faster. Of course, that doesn't work if you're flying west, then you're just wasting fuel. What they can do is kind of go around it. Nick Bond is our state climatologist. It is highly unusual, and of course it's impacting uh, airline operations. And while the airplane speed part of this story might fit into the area of fun facts, the jet stream also has everything to do with our weather. Bring in our cold and snowiest February in decades. And it shows it's coming out of Alaska along the coast of British Columbia into Washington State. And before that, our crazy nice January where temperatures hit 61 degrees and allowed the State Department of Transportation to get the tunnel hooked up to Highway 99 pretty much unscheduled. It was coming off the Pacific and even from south of normal. As Bond makes a few keystrokes, we are reminded that our weather is interconnected. There's kind of two lobes, one there and especially this one there. And here's the thing this winter, the swing of the jet stream, how high it reaches into the Arctic, and how deep it dives across the continent is messing with us. Remember the polar vortex, the part in purple that plunged much of the Midwest and even the South into the deep freeze as we were enjoying warmth and sunshine in yellow. Overall, the winter average is out just a few degrees warmer for most of us. As a whole, this winter may not go down as to be that special in terms of its overall temperature. And that's the thing about averages. So one of the questions I had for Nick Bond was, well, wasn't this supposed to be an El Nino winter, which usually brings fairly warm temperatures? Well, certainly January was looking like that. This is also part of the same deal. This involves warmer water in the Pacific Ocean as it gets pushed to uh, South and Central America. Well, the El Nino kind of fell apart. So we're really not getting any benefit from that at all. Live in Seattle, Glenn Farley, King 5 News.